I became a Christian when I was very young and like a lot of people who have walked with the Lord for a long time, um, my relationship has been up and down and there are times when I have been or at least felt closer to Him than other times, um, times when I have been actively pursuing Him and walking with Him and times when I haven't been, in fact times when unfortunately I have been doing my best to go in an opposite direction. Um, thankfully, he has always called me back to him. I've always been able to find my way back um, because he never has let go of me. But something that has sustained my faith, even in times when I wasn't walking with the Lord, is that I have always loved his word. I've always loved the Bible from the time I was very young. I think part of that is because I just love history in general and I love reading, I love books, and so I've always found myself captivated by the stories um, that the Bible tells. I think some of it probably has to do with the fact that I grew up with a Baptist upbringing and that is highly valued. I am very thankful to this day that I had a youth pastor that really encouraged us to be in the Word and to get to know the Bible and preached out of the Bible and, and just helped us to have a value for the Bible as well. Um, and I grew up in a family that had a value for it. So, so I feel very fortunate about all of this. Um, the reason I'm sharing it with you is because it wasn't until I became a young adult though that I really began to connect with the Lord through the Bible. So when I was young, I started reading my Bible regularly, probably around sixth grade. You know, I had devotionals that I would do that helped lead me through it. I would read the Bible myself. Um, in fact, just the other day, um, Jamie found a box with some of our old books in it, some of our old Bibles, and this was my first Bible. It's a Precious Moments Bible um, that was given to me when I was, I don't even know how old. Um, but I recorded different things that happened in my Christian walk. Oh, it was given to me in 1986 from my parents, actually. Um, I wrote graffiti about the Lord <laughs> in my Bible. Um, but this was my first Bible, at least that I can remember. I also had um, my grandparents gave me this Bible, so it's a keepsake to me. It's very special. Um, because they they gave it to me on my birthday and they inscribed it with a verse that is still um, a very special verse to me. Um, again, I wrote in it different things that happened um, just in my in my walk with the Lord when I was a teenager when I was young. Um, but I have met people, so I've always loved the word. I've always valued it. It's always been in my heart and something that I've always believed. Um, but it wasn't until I became a young adult that I really recognized that the Lord was still speaking today. That he wasn't just, um, you know, where he spoke once and we wrote stuff down and now he's done. But that every day it wasn't just a religious exercise, but that I could take the Bible and I could actually connect with the Lord and hear what he is saying for me today. So now I value the Bible even more than ever because not only do I value the history of it and um, just the way that you can connect with the Lord just by and know his ways and know him just by reading it, but I value it for the fresh words that he continues to speak and how the Holy Spirit will blow on it as you're reading it and suddenly a passage, even if it's one you've read a hundred times, suddenly it will come to life um, in that moment because the Holy Spirit's speaking to you. So I can't imagine my life without the Bible in it. Um, but I have people in my life or you know, people that um, are at the church that sometimes will come up to me and ask me about how to start reading the Bible because if you didn't grow up reading it, it can be a pretty intimidating book. If you're not familiar with the child version of it, then to enter into it as an adult can be really confusing. It can be off-putting um, and it can, it can just 
be almost like a stumbling block in how you're trying to connect with the Lord. So it's been one of my joys in the last um, however long we've had a school. <laughs> um, on and off, I've been able to teach our Bible class at the School of Ministry, um, and I love it. It is, as I have said, it's a passion of mine. Those are some of the favorite classes of mine that I took in college. So um, I'm not going to take you guys through an entire Bible curriculum, um, but what I do want to do is I want to help just break down how to have a quiet time, and I want to help you guys to understand the Bible, at least in a general sense, so that as you read it, you have context for it and you're able to move past whatever the stumbling blocks might be and really use it to connect with the Lord. So I'm not going to do that all in this video, but I am going to be um, over, I don't know how long <laughs> actually, um, but I'll be taking some time and posting uh, videos here. Um, for you guys who are interested to just kind of help you, you know, it doesn't matter if you just came to the Lord um, or if you've been walking with the Lord for a long time, if you just have had trouble connecting um, with the Lord through his word, his written word, then I just want to encourage you to be on this journey with us. Um, so I'm going to pray and then I'm just going to share a brief little thing with you um, and then we'll be done for today. But so, Father, I just thank you for the people that are watching, and I thank you for the gift of your words. I thank you that you still speak to us today, and that you have always spoken throughout history, and that you have given us access to the Bible, Father. What an amazing gift. Um, so, Lord, I just ask that you would be meeting us here today, that you'd be meeting us through your word, through your words that you're speaking now, that, Holy Spirit, you would come and you would just touch people's hearts and you would just cause the words to come alive. And more than anything, that, um, that this season would be one, Father, where your church would be hungry and that you would meet us in our hunger and that we would be passionately on fire, intimately connected, wholeheartedly pursuing you. So just thank you. Thank you for the people watching. Bless them and, and bless this time. Amen. All right, so this is how my quiet time always looks. I'm outside, it's beautiful, it's very quiet. I have all my supplies. I have uninterrupted time for hours. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I remember days, however, where I was able to do that before we had children. I used to get up early every morning and um, when Jamie was in the military, he had to be at work earlier than I did when we lived in Germany. He, um, we would ride to base together. And so I would bring him to base, we'd go to the gym, <laughs> and then he'd go into work and I would come home and I got to have the house to myself and I would make myself a cup of coffee. It was Folgers then, which was our budget. Thankfully it's improved since then. No offense to any of you, but, um, and I just would have these sweet times with the Lord. Now, as our life changed, and as we had kids and more kids, <laughs> that has become a distant memory um, and the reason I'm telling you that is because your quiet time doesn't have to be quiet and it's going to take different forms throughout your life your life has different seasons and so sometimes the way that you meet with the Lord primarily will look in one way um, and then in other seasons it might look a completely different way and that's okay um, the Lord's okay with that relationships grow and change and the trick is is that you don't only meet with the Lord during your quiet time because you're connected to him all the time so hopefully you are fellowshipping with him and in prayer you know the Bible tells us to be in prayer continuously um, and so that is a skill to learn how to to just be sane in communion and an awareness of him and um, an affection towards him all day um, but if you have never had a quiet time I encourage you to begin to make that a practice in your life. Now, some of the tools for a quiet time, which is why I have these <laughs> things um, that can be helpful, are first of all, a Bible. Now, I have been collecting Bibles for a long time. Um, I, however, until recently, was rarely reading out of an actual Bible. Used to be my practice, 
Um, but I have an app on my phone that I love because I am a words girl and I love to read in a majillion different versions. So if there's something I'm meditating on, I really like to, to read it over and over again in different versions and just catch more full meaning um, that way. I also like to, you know, in my app I can, I can click on the word and it will bring me back to the original word and it will help me to have definitions and those things and I really like to do that. You don't need to have that much in order just to read the Bible though, but you do need to have a Bible. I recently was inspired and so I just bought this Bible. Um, it has the big margins that you can write notes on and so I'm hoping to start using this. As I said, it just got it. It's brand new. I was inspired because Jamie has one of his mom's Bibles that has little notes in it and verses that she marked and and it's such a precious gift to that I thought oh that would be really special to be able to leave something like that um, also to the generations after me um, and so so I'm going to attempt to go back to uh, actual book um, but it isn't necessary but what you do need to have, whether it's an app on your phone or a book that you're reading, you need to have a version that you understand. So there are a ton of different versions out there. One of the most common ones is the NIV. It's the new international version. Um, it's a very easy Bible to understand and to read normally. There's also um, an NIV version for younger readers. Um, which I have used with my kids, which is really great. Um, there's the New Living Translation, the one that we use at the house um, when we're preaching, or the one that Jamie and I primarily read out of, happens to be um, the New International, or I'm sorry, <laughs> the, the NASB, um, the New American Standard Bible. And we have reasons why we like that version a lot. I'm not going to continue to go into the differences, um, but you know, there are the message and the passion translation and, and there are differences in all of them. And I do definitely have ones that I would suggest over others. And I do believe that some of them tend to be a little more accurate than others. <laughs> but all in all, I don't think it's a big deal. I think that you should read whatever one you feel comfortable with, that you feel drawn to that you actually understand as you're reading it because if you have a version that you're comfortable with, you are more likely to spend time in it. So do take a little bit of time and maybe try some out. You know, there are free apps. Um, Bible Gateway has a free app that you can put on your phone that has lots of different translations on it. So take some time if you don't have a Bible that you are already comfortable with. And I do recommend that you make a investment whether it is you know maybe it's you know you start out with just a free version on your phone um, but having one in person <laughs> that you can make notes in if you want to and things like that can also be very special so so I highly recommend that another thing that can be helpful is just having a pen and a notebook um, so these are what mine look like. I use them for different things, but I'm kind of a freak that way. <laughs> so you don't have to have different ones. Um, I also use notes in my phone or sometimes I'll use pages on my iPad. Um, but it is nice to have something to write down what you're learning, what you feel like the Lord is speaking so you can go back to it later. Um, and it's also helpful sometimes just to have a piece of paper to write things down. And what I mean by that isn't necessarily things pertaining to your quiet time, but sometimes when you're having time with the Lord, you're going to remember stuff. Oh, I didn't put this on the grocery list. Oh, I need to do this. Oh, I never called that person back. You know, and these things are going to come to mind. And it can be actually really helpful if you have a piece of paper, little notebook, again, maybe it's your phone, you just jot it down so that you can let go of that thought. And maybe it's a distraction or maybe the Lord's reminding you. It's hard to say, but once you jot it down, then you can put it to the side, forget about it until later, and just go back to spending time with the Lord. All right, so those are helpful tools. We'll talk a little bit more in the future about um, different styles and ways to have quiet times. But what I want to encourage you with today is just that you don't actually have to make it a big production. Oh, I almost forgot the most important tool coffee cup. 
can fill it with coffee, with tea, water, whatever it might be, but having a coffee cup, having your favorite coffee, even if there's chaos going on, even if you're doing a um, family devotional with 10 people and two dogs and, you know, people running around or whatever, having your Bible and your coffee can be very comforting. This is my favorite cup, probably. I have a collection of mugs. This is the one that I got when we were in Maui on our anniversary trip, so it has a special place in my heart. Um, anyway, <laughs> this video is long enough, so let me get to the point and finish up. Um, what I want to end with, and the very most important thing, if you didn't get anything else out of this video, is that the purpose that you spend time in the Word is to connect with the Lord. So we have this thing when I am spending time with my kids in the Bible, um, you know, Jamie too will say, what is this? And they'll say, you know, it's a Bible, it's God's words. So who wrote it? God did. So who can help us to understand it? God can. And so anytime we spend time in the word, we just say a simple prayer at the beginning and say, Lord, please help us to understand what you're saying to us today. Help us to hear, give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and understanding hearts. And it's that simple, and then we go into our quiet time. So when you're spending time with the Lord, the most important thing isn't that you spend an hour uninterrupted reading the Word. It isn't the most important thing that you even memorize Scripture or that you're making it through the Bible in a certain amount of time. Those things can be really good things. But the most important thing is that you are tuning your heart to the Lord and you're listening to what He is saying. Because He can speak to you in a verse. He can speak to you, you know, in large chunks of Scripture too. But I'll never forget when um, Jamie's sister was probably like 13 or something at the time. And I was having a conversation with her about quiet times and her quiet times. And she said something to me like, yeah, my mom told me just to read until I hear the Lord speak to me and then I'm done. <laughs> and wow, I was blown away because I was just discovering that the Lord really does still speak at that time. Um, and here she was, this amazing teenage girl that had already learned the secret and the key and the reason why that you would have a quiet time or spend time in the Word is that you just read to hear His voice. So sometimes He's going to speak to you right away, sometimes it's going to take a little longer. Um, but, but He is going to speak. So raise your expectation and listen to hear His voice and open your heart and ask Him to give you eyes to see and ears to hear because as you pursue him, he will reveal himself to you. He'll do it in all kinds of ways, but one of the most, maybe not most, but one very important and special way that he does speak to us to this day is through his word. So, you know, we'll do more videos and we'll talk about the Bible and you know, reading plans and how the Bible was written um, and just things that will maybe help you to just have a little more understanding as you do read it. But even if you never watch another video, um, I hope that this has opened your heart and encouraged you to have value for his words because the Lord wants to speak to you. He is speaking to you. Um, and if we just tune our ears to hear, our whole lives change. So thank you guys for watching. Blessings to you.